Hello, my name is Chris Salvo, and I'm a student here in CPES. Today I'll be talking about the front end to a 48 to 12 1 kilowatt intermediate bus converter. This converter uses gallium nitride devices to help increase the switching frequency while keeping the efficiency and power density high. This project was sponsored by Lockheed Martin, the Department of Energy, and Power America. The 48 to 12 intermediate bus converter is used in a variety of applications, including wireless networks, aerospace, data centers, and telecom applications. Shown by the graph on the right, current IBCs on the market either have high power density with low output power or low power densities with higher output power. The goal of this project was to produce a prototype IBC that has both high output power and high power density, as shown by the design target on the right. Our goal is to achieve one kilowatt output power with at least 96% efficiency while achieving over 550 watts per cubic inch in power density. The topology selected for the IBC is a two-stage converter. It is an interleaved buck converter followed by an LLC converter. The two-stage topology is selected so that the switching frequency of the buck and LLC are kept constant. The buck converter provides regulation while the LLC provides isolation. This presentation showcases the interleaved buck converter. The buck converter is hard switched, so device selection is very important. After simulating device losses for various GAN FETs, the EPC2045 was chosen as both the high side device and synchronous rectifier. Various interleaving schemes were also simulated to see what topology for the buck would give the most benefit for the best size. After careful analysis, a four phase interleave buck converter was chosen with two separate coupled inductors for the magnetics. The magnetic design played an important role in the size and loss of the buck converter. A standard EI core was chosen for the shape of the coupled inductor. The converter was then optimized around the following flowchart. The goal was to look for an inductor that would give the best efficiency and highest power density. After following the optimization, a curve can be plotted that shows the calculated efficiency versus the power density of the buck converter at various turn ratios for the inductor. A design point for six turns was chosen because it provides the best efficiency over all of the power densities. On the left is the hardware of the buck converter and the controller. Two LM5170s from TI are used. They are bi-directional average current mode controllers. On the right is the measured versus the calculated combined open loop efficiency of the two-stage IBC at 48 volt input. The converter can achieve a peak efficiency of 96.1% and a power density of 680 watts per cubic inch, or 41.5 kilowatts per liter. Shown here is the four-phased interleaved buck converter. Here are the four phases. They are using the EPC2045 as both the top device and the synchronous rectifier. If you come down here to the bottom, you can see that there are two separate coupled inductors. This is phases one, phases two, phases three, and phases four. Phases one and two are 180 degrees out of phase, and phases three and four are 180 degrees out of phase, while lagging phases one and two by 90 degrees. You can see that the power flows from top to bottom around the inductor and then out here to the left to the LLC. And then over here is the daughter card which is using two LM5170s from TI and they control the buck converter. Shown here is the startup of the buck converter. So the yellow waveform is the low side gate signal for phase one. The red waveform is the low side gate signal for phase two. The green waveform is the switching node signal for phase two and the pink waveform is the bus voltage for the buck converter. The startup time takes 15 milliseconds and this is set by the controller so that the input, uh, input transients for the current do not damage the devices on either the buck or the LLC. Shown here are the same waveforms. We have the low side gate signal for phase one and the low side gate signal for phase two, which are 180 degrees out of phase. And then we have the switch node signal for phase two and the output voltage. Thank you for watching and we'll see you at the conference.